Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video to compare two of my favourite USB microphones that I've tested out in the last year, both with interesting features and specifications that make them kind of similar but also different in a number of different ways. So I want to talk to you about what these two microphones are like and why they're worth considering. This is the Elgato Wave 3 versus the HyperX Quadcast, and I'll also link in the description to the other videos I've done that include comparing the HyperX Quadcast with the Yeti Nano, as you can see here, and the unboxing and review videos of both these mics that will give you a bit more detail and close-up goodness of each of them. I'm going to start with the HyperX Quadcast, which is a feature-rich microphone that features a condenser design, but also, as you can see, a really pleasing design aesthetic to it. It comes with a number of really nice quirks that include a built-in shock mount that you can see here with the red bits on it that absorb a lot of the wobbles and knocks from your desk and you can see it's designed to move around but without taking that sound into the microphone. Really interesting design to it there. It has a built-in shock mount but also a pop filter inside and quite a stylish design to it with these red accents. So you can see the mic itself has that honeycomb design, has these red accented cabling on the shock mount so it's quite unusual to see a shock mount built into a microphone it comes on the stand with the shock mount built into it usually a shock mount is a extra purchase that you have to pay extra for an additional accessory that you'd buy for your microphone if you're thinking about mounting on a boom arm or just improving the mic's experience reducing the environmental noise and background noise that get picked up from your desk as you're typing or doing whatever else. So I thought it was a really interesting design and really cool and unusual. You can see the standard mount that it comes on here. It is also boom arm mountable that I'll show you a bit later on and just looks really nice on the desk. There are a number of other features too that make it interesting. As I said, it's got the pop filter integrated inside it and it has this really cool honeycomb design to it that also lights up. So it lights up and changes color depending on whether it's muted or not. So you can have a capacitive mute button on the top that I'll show you in a minute. You can just touch to turn it on and off. And that's a similarity to the Elgato Wave 3 that I'll show you later on as well. So there are some things about these mics that are comparable. Now the HyperX Quadcast has a sample rate of 48 kilohertz, 16 bit and frequency response of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And that's comparable roughly with the Wave 3, but the Wave 3 has a sample rate of 48 to 96 kilohertz and 24 bit as well as 70 to 20,000 hertz frequency response. So there's a bit more in terms of sample rate and frequency response to it. However, they both offer fantastic audio capture. And I'm using the Wave 3 now to do the voiceover of this video. And if you want to get a sample of what the audio is like on the HyperX Quadcast, check out that video in the description because I used that mic in that video and the voiceover for that. Here you can see the capacitive touch mute. So you don't need to press a button. If you need to mute it, you can just touch the top of it. Now the HyperX Quadcast stands apart from the Wave 3 in that it has four polar patterns. It has stereo, omnidirectional, cardioid, and bidirectional, and they're switchable on the rear using this dial. The Elgato Wave 3 only has the cardioid pattern to it, so that's straight on voice capture, but the HyperX Quadcast means that you can basically use it in a slightly more flexible way if you want to do podcasts, you have multiple people talking into it or whatever else then you can do that. Have a gain volume wheel on the bottom here that again has a sort of very soft touch slide to it so there's no noise. If you have to need to adjust any of these sorts of things while you're using it, there's no feedback or noise from clicks or you tapping on the mic because it's all very nice and quiet. And it's these clever design aesthetics and features that make the HyperX Quadcast really appealing in my mind. And it also delivers fantastic audio capture. Here you can see it mounted on a compass boom arm from Blue and that Boom is really great to use and it's easy mounting with the accessories that are included in the box. Now onto the Elgato Wave 3, another solid microphone and a really nice design. And I talked about the reasons why I like this microphone in the unboxing and the reasons I didn't. As you can see, the design isn't quite as appealing. It's a black microphone on a fairly underwhelming stand. There's nothing that in your face about it. However, it does have an internal pop filter on it. 
it does have that extra frequency response. It is good at capturing audio. As you can hear from the mic quality of this voiceover, it also does a really good job of capturing really good audio. You can adjust things like the mic gain, the audio feedback from the monitoring, if you plug in a 3.5mm headset to it on here as well. And that button you can push it into cycle between those different things. On top you'll see a mute button. Again that's capacitive so you just have to touch it gently and here you can see the mute button there. Just gentle touch. So there's similarities to the HyperX Quadcast there. USB-C for the Wave 3 which the Quadcast didn't have. And mic monitoring on the rear with a 3.5mm connection. And you'll see that it comes with a detachable stand. There are accessories that you can buy for the Wave 3 that include a shock mount and other things so you can upgrade it. And you can also mount this on a boom arm, although I did note that I had some issues with getting it on the same boom arm as I did the HyperX podcast. However, that was with the shock mount from Blue that was in there, so you need not an optional accessory for that. I also did note that there is a little bit of wobble in the microphone. I noticed when I was setting it up initially that even on the stand it wobbles ever so slightly, so obviously it doesn't have the benefit of the shock mount being into it that the Quadcast does. However, they're both fantastic microphones in terms of design, and the Wave 3 has a really good highlight that I'll share at the end of this video in terms of the software that comes with it. So where both mics are plug and play, and both are very easy to use in that way, you just plug them in and you can record with Audacity or use it for streaming purposes. And that is the purpose of the Wave 3. It's obviously aimed at creators and streamers who want to be able to interface directly and broadcast live and capture the best audio quality. I did note when I was using the Wave 3 that it picked up a lot of background noise and I had to do a bit of tweaking in order to minimize the amount of background noise it was picking up both for recordings and for live streams. And I've done a video separately on how to do that and the sort of things to be aware of. Basically it's turning the gain down as low as possible, getting the mic close to your face countering background noise as much as you can and adjusting settings within the software. Now as I said you can detach this from its stand and in the box you get an adapter that allows you to then mount it on a boom arm. I found that I couldn't mount it on a standard shock mount that wasn't by Elgato. It had to be an Elgato one and they have an accessory to do this or you can just mount it straight onto a boom arm and I'll show you that mounted on the compass boom arm same as the quadcast in a minute and I'd highly recommend checking out the compass boom arms nice solid bit of kit really well designed nice hefty capable boom arm and that is a great option for this microphone although Elgato also has their own options as well available that are worth having a look at in terms of design, I feel like maybe the Elgato Wave 3 doesn't feel quite the same quality as the HyperX Quadcast. It doesn't look it and it perhaps doesn't feel it in terms of the build design. It's not as visually appealing and considering they both offer really good audio capture, I think maybe the Quadcast is slightly superior in terms of aesthetics and features in, in the hardware side of things, but where the Wave 3 shines is really in the software, and that software is so powerful that it kind of stands out as a very appealing microphone. For me, actually, if you're using it for streaming purposes, and I'll show you in a second just how good it is, that software alone is a reason to buy this microphone over any other USB microphone in my mind. There are other alternative options that you can do things with on the software, but I'm going to quickly show you and I'll go into a bit more depth in a couple of other videos that I'll link to in the description. But essentially you have this Wavelink software that allows you to not only control the levels of the microphone, but you can also use it as an audio router to set up different audio sources to then get pulled into your mic and then output it into something Thing like Streamlabs OBS or OBS Classic Studio and you can basically filter the audio in certain ways and adjust the levels accordingly. So what I'm doing here for example is I'm setting it up so the output goes to my headset and the input is the Wave 3 microphone and then I'm setting it up so I'm setting Spotify as a music source within the Wavelink software and then I'm going to have Discord and the game audio as well and I'm basically what I want to do is to be able to use this software to get the levels just right so 
that when my audience is listening on Twitch or wherever I'm live broadcasting, they're hearing a perfect balance of all of those things. And you can monitor the audio of what the end result is so that you can hear what your audience is going to hear. And you can do that live with those buttons that you click at the bottom of this Wavelink software. Not only that, but you can also set it so that your audience is hearing music. In this case, I'm using Harris Heller's copyright free music that's on Spotify and other sources. You can stream that music to your audience but not hear it yourself or have it at a low level for yourself and higher for your audience so they've got a nice chilled out background music for your stream but it's not interfering with your game audio and that software is so powerful and customizable and it makes it much easier to set up the audio for your streams and that is a massive selling point for this microphone on its own. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Be sure to check out the description for all the specifications, features, and everything else you need to know, as well as links to the other videos. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, or hilarious. Be sure to subscribe and check out these other videos, as well as taking a look in the description for the links and Ember information you might find useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see extra about this. And have a great life.